is on the air. Metro-Golden-Mare presents a radio preview of important scenes from the production Parnell, co-starring Clark Gable as the romantic Parnell, who sacrificed fame for the love of Katie O'Shea, played by Myrna Loy. Parnell brings you the amazing and true chronicle of a romance that played havoc with an empire. As romantic history, it is deathless. As dramatic entertainment, it is matchless. Our program opens with a medley of Songs of Ireland, the turbulent, colorful background of Parnell. turn of the century, Ireland is seething with the fury of a mighty struggle for home rule. Unorganized, lacking in diplomatic power, the cause looks hopeless as false leaders rabble-rouse mobs to violence. Tenants face eviction from their homes, and a nation of brave people cry out in anguish. Then into the limelight steps the man destined to become their uncrowned king, Charles Stuart Parnell, champion of the damned, a patriot fired with one burning desire, freedom, freedom, 
freedom for his people. It is true that there is unrest in Ireland today. There always will be until you give the farmer fair treatment, assure fair dealing between landlord and tenant, and give Ireland a parliament that she can call her own. As much as any Englishman here present, I deplore the unrest, the violence, and the outrage. Three rebellions. A million and a half people dead from starvation and sickness. And three million people forced to leave their land to find food and homes elsewhere. Surely this is a spectacle that marks the very height of tragic suffering. And all the while, across that narrow strip of water called the Irish Sea, so narrow that it's a wonder their cries cannot be heard here in this house. As I hear them now in my ears, the sister people agonizes and unheeded. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Settle the land question, Mr. Speaker. Assure fair dealings between landlord and tenant, and you'll have peace in Ireland. Send us the military, and you ravage the country anew. You'll take an earthquake to settle the Irish land question. Then let us have an earthquake. <laughs> With the Irish members of the House united solidly behind him, Parnell carries on his fight with Gladstone, British Prime Minister. Then comes a momentous occasion in Parnell's life. He meets the beautiful Katie O'Shea, estranged wife of a member of his own party. Disregarding the political danger involved in an association with another man's wife, Parnell falls madly in love with Katie O'Shea. I was in the ladies' gallery just now when you spoke. Oh, then you saw the fireworks. After your wonderful speech, I thought the house would rise in the body and grant Ireland her freedom. You must have listened with your heart. Men avoid that if they can. But I'm sure you didn't come here to discuss politics. No. My purpose was to extend an invitation. It's accepted. Then I'm really to expect you. Goodbye, Mr. Farnell. And thank you. Do you believe in me? No. Haven't you ever felt that there might be someone, somewhere, who, if you could only find them, was the person that you'd been always meant to meet? Haven't you ever felt that? No. I think sometimes I've wished I did believe there could be such a person. You know, miracles happen. I have my proof of that now. Miracles? Yes. I've seen you before today, Mrs. O'Shea. Indeed? Yes. Last week at the opera, you were wearing a white dress with white roses. Why, yes. The lights went up and there you were. Suddenly there was no music, no opera house, nothing. Nothing but a distance between us. I asked who you were. No one could give me your name. I resolved to find it out, to meet you. And now here you are. Here we are. Talking. Friend. Friend. The love of Parnell for Katie O'Shea proves to be the weapon Gladstone needs for his rival's humiliation and defeat. Just as victory is within Parnell's grasp, Katie O'Shea's husband sues for divorce and names him as co-respondent. Parnell's own party, his own people turn against him, for the divorce court means the loss of prestige and dignity, and that means the loss of freedom and home rule. He is forced to make a choice, Katie O'Shea's love or his country's loyalty. Parnell chooses both and plunges again into battle. Gentlemen, gentlemen, Mr. Parnell. I have a parliament for Ireland in the hollow of my hand. You have, sir. I give you my word, I'll get it for you if you'll let me. Right. And if you don't meet another Kitty O'Shea. Go away, 
away from here. From me. Forever. Katie, this is fantastic. It will prevent there being a divorce. And you'll be tied to O'Shea for the rest of your life. I have been for years. It will be no worse. Morgan, can you imagine the length he'll go to when the world knows him for what he is? Have you thought of the misery he'll put on you for your part in it? Willie coming to me for favors is one thing, but Willie publicly branded malignant is another. Do you think I'll leave you to him? Katie, you can't defend this case. You shan't. Isn't this what we've always wanted? Freedom for you, for us to marry. Not like this. Perhaps not. But if you've wanted something as we've wanted to be free, you don't question how it comes. You take it when it comes. Charles, I'm afraid. Katie, look at me. Don't be afraid. We have no regrets, no fears, no remorse. We don't know the future. But in this instant, this present, I have you. That is enough. I've given Ireland everything, my whole life, until now. They can't deny me the right of every man to have the woman he loves beside him. Parnell brings you in all its glory the beautiful drama of a romance that would not be denied, the gripping love story of a patriot who lost a nation when he refused to carry on without the woman he loved at his side. A Metro-Golden-Mare picture, Parnell was produced and directed by John M. Stahl, who has brought you such great screen hits as Imitation of Life, Only Yesterday, and Magnificent Obsession. Co-starred are Clark Gable and Myrna Loy, with a superb supporting cast including Edna May Oliver as Aunt Ben, Billy Burke as Clara, Edmund Gwen as Campbell, Donald Crisp as David, and Montague Love as Gladstone. The music heard on this program was played by Metro-Golden-Mare Orchestra under the direction of Dr. William Axton. <laughs>